Okay, here we go. Yep. It's all my fault, princess. I thought I could trick Trixie into revealing her plot by pretending to give her the Alicorn amulet. But I was wrong. We followed after them to retrieve it, but it seems that Baruch saw us coming. At least you are safe. Well, kind of. I wouldn't call being locked in a dungeon safe. What of the amulet? Has Trixie relinquished it to Estelle? I'm afraid so, Princess. Then hope is truly lost. <sighs> I never meant for things to get this out of hoof. I am so sorry that you ponies must suffer from my poor decisions. What decisions? I'm afraid there are secrets in my past that I have spent centuries trying to forget. It's only right that you valiant ponies hear the truth, though it is a hard one to swallow. You must understand that I only tried to protect the ponies, but I made a terrible mistake, and now all of Equestria will suffer the consequences. Long ago, in the time of Star Swirl the Bearded, Star Swirl the Bearded he enjoyed the magical miracles he performed and the wondrous magic he created. As time grew long, however, Star Swirl grew weary of his immortality and the burden of the magical leadership that was demanded of him. His appearances to the ponies became further and further apart, until he decided to only make himself known to the other ponies once every 100 years. Starswell knew that his guidance was highly valued, and that ponies might suffer from his disappearance. So, he decreed that upon his arrival every century, he would take into his care a single apprentice that he would train to take his place for the duration of his time away. After one year of his tutelage, that apprentice was equipped with enough magic to take over his responsibilities for the next century. Clover the Clever was one such apprentice, and she was a key element to uniting all pony kind with the fires of friendship and establishing a new kingdom called Equestria. The creation of this new kingdom convinced Starswell that rather than searching for a mere apprentice to replace Clover the Clever, he could finally train an adequate heir. As far as I remember, Starswell had had a vision that guided him to that heir. For the first time in Pony Is Hill, that Estelle? he chose an Earth Pony apprentice to carry on his legacy, but failed to mention his master plan for her future. That Earth Pony was Estelle. What? Forgive the intrusion, Princess, but there's nothing in Star Swirl's diaries about Estelle. And there wouldn't be. I kept those volumes locked away from other ponies, safe in my private studies in the Canterlot archives. The missing book! The missing what now? Yes, I had to retrieve the diary when I knew who I was up to. The against. same book! Thought of Estelle, I wanted to reference what had been written about her studies, hoping it would prepare me to face her again. How were you aware of this? <laughs> we sort of stumbled upon your private study, and it was kind of easy to pick the lock. <laughs> I imagine it would be. Uh. <laughs> the magical seal from the room to enter it, and forgot to reseal it when I departed. Oh, Rainbow. On my mind. So, Estelle took over for Star Swirl and became an alicorn? Not exactly, dear one. Estelle was given a unicorn horn in a grand ceremony in her honor that she would then use in her training. Estelle had always it is been Estelle. obsessed with magic, so this opportunity was a dream come true. 
She trained with Starsworld for countless hours and days, rarely seen outside the castle library. But after her year was almost completed, a great war had claimed Equestria. You see, Equestria was a vast land that had once been inhabited by all sorts of creatures who were driven out by the ponies now inhabiting it. They demanded the return of their land, but the pony leaders, including the Unicorn King, had refused. The war lasted many years and claimed several lives on both sides of the battle. Starswall and the Unicorn King were called away from the throne to assist on the front lines, leaving Estelle to guide the ponies in their absence. Even in great panic, she led the ponies with grace and humility, only furthering Starswall's confidence in her capability to permanently take his place. In the final battle of the war, the ponies proved to be victorious, but it had come at a grave cost. The Unicorn King had perished in battle and left no heir to the throne. Ponies looked to Starswall and Estelle for guidance, choosing to put their trust in them. After oh my gosh! Starswall presented Estelle to the ponies and announced her true calling as their queen. He wanted her to represent all pony kind, Earth, Unicorn, and Pegasi. And his final gift to her were a magnificent pair of wings, making her the first known alicorn in our histories. Starswell believes that Estelle would rule as an immortal but benevolent leader. He had given her the means to control all kinds of magic, and every pony felt safe once more. However, Starswell's plans came to an abrupt halt when he had confessed his true intention for her training. Estelle reacted with shock and resentment and rejected his proposal to take his place. Their conflict lasted many days until at last Estelle fled the castle, abandoning her throne and the pony she ruled. Starswell was forced to re-examine his prophecy. I feel so sorry for Estelle. In his haste to find an heir, he had misinterpreted his vision and chosen the wrong member of her bloodline as apprentice. The true successor was in fact Estelle's younger sister. Realizing his mistake, he addressed the ponies once more and declared that this sister was their true leader and she would be trained to guide them into a brighter future.
what's this? This will allow you to see into my past so that you may understand why things must be the way they are. Okay, I I'm gonna stop right here because, uh, yeah, I don't have a full video for this. I I just told you guys, so yeah, uh, goodbye.